Good evening, everyone. My name is Ayari. I'm a senior at Xavier University. <laughs> so this theme for this year is how can we take a journey together as an intersection of communities? But today I would talk to you about how we must first journey separately. During a Dorothy Day immersion trip to St. Louis, we met with Pastor Tracy Blackman. She said something that resonated with me. She said, in order for us to address racism, we can't just work together as black and whites collectively. But the black community has to focus on issues in the black community, and the white community has to focus on issues in the white community. What she said didn't make sense to me at first, but I've had time to reflect over her statement, and so I will share my interpretation. I grew up in the west suburbs of Chicago, where all my neighbors were middle class white families. In school, I was usually the only black kid in my class. I graduated with six black class, classmates out of 502 students total. I knew that I didn't quite fit in, but I tried the best that I could. I knew that I was black, but I didn't know what that meant. It wasn't the case that I didn't know the richness of my culture or my people. I just didn't know myself. So I've immersed myself in my blackness, and in doing so, I gained self-love. A critical starting point for the black community is for us to regain our self-love. So I've written a love letter to my community. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to start loving ourselves again. We have to find our purpose and our passion to fight for what is right and stop being distracted by celebrity drama. <laughs> we need to pay attention, but most importantly, we need to stop feeling sorry for ourselves. We can't be upset for five minutes and expect change. If you're unhappy with the way that we are treated in this country, then get up and do something about it, consistently. It doesn't matter if you're light skin, dark skin, brown skin, stop competing with one another. Competing with each other has gotten us absolutely nowhere. Change begins in the masses, and until black people realize that, we will get nowhere. We have to be able to break ourselves down to the bare minimum, hit rock bottom, and we either accept the way that things are or we change them. A friend asked me, why are you criticizing your own people? Because I realized I loved myself and my people too much to sit back and let things continue on the way that they are. Now, a year ago, I would have never done a speech like this or even thought it the way I think now. But I've immersed myself in my blackness, and in doing so, I have gained my self-love, and I've loved every second of it. I am willing, by any means necessary, to bring my people up and out of our situation. In the words of Angela Davis, I am no longer accepting things I cannot change. I am changing things I cannot accept. Because if the black community doesn't do for itself, no one else is gonna do it for us. Love your sister. <laughs> for my brothers and sisters in the white community, I can only give suggestions and advice. For a person of color, talking about racism is exhausting. <laughs> it's time the white community do some legwork. I've had many of my white friends ask me, <laughs> hey, Yari, I really want to talk about racism in our country. I just don't know how. My answer is to educate yourself and your friends and your families and be able to understand why we kneel during the national anthem. It starts by reading a book, watching a documentary about slavery, Jim Crow, the new Jim Crow, mass incarceration, and critically analyze the issue. Then take what you've learned, share with others, and start a meaningful discussion. Have those uncomfortable conversations about racism at Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner with your families, but most importantly, have those conversations 
sitting at the lunch table on the bus or while you're walking home from that basketball game with your friends and classmates. But also, educate yourself on the richness of black culture, our resiliency, food, clothing, hairstyles, music and dances, just to name a few. I want to encourage all of you to engage in conversations and relationships with all types of cultures and populations of people in the community. Get out of your comfort zone and seek to understand that thing, culture, or that person. Always ask questions, even if it means putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations. Staying comfortable and not acting keeps you complacent to the issues that plague our nation. The only way we can be authentic in our fight for social justice and be able to take this journey together is when we become authentic within ourselves and in our own communities. Don't ever be afraid to make mistakes. No one said it was going to be easy and it's definitely not going to be. There are always going to be spaces for blacks and whites to come together, such as having programs like Dorothy Day Immersions and IFTJ and other cultural events at your schools and universities. But when we have these conversations, they must be open, non-judgmental, and we must actively listen to those who are marginalized, because not just one voice speaks for everyone. Listen to that person, but most importantly, hear what they're saying. I'm no expert. I have a lot of growing up to you, just like the rest of you in this room. I have to continue to accept myself and others around me. I don't have all the answers. But what I do know is that true love and change starts with you. I want to leave you knowing the power that you have to change yourself and the world around you. My personal philosophy is this. We can never, walk in, we can never fully walk in one another's shoes. But when someone hands you their shoe, take the time to appreciate the journey that that shoe has taken. Appreciate the shoe and love the foot that it fits. Thank you.